to do. Uh, but again, like I said, I've applied to many different companies outside of California, and they are out there. Many of them they're growing. And um, uh, what was the second part of the question, Ted? Uh, well, basically, it was along the same lines of just in general because he lives out of state and he wanted yeah. to know, you know, uh, like how did he, how does he go about getting contacts, being where he's at with people here in right. California, you know? Uh, well, if if you have been drawing and working with you on your own personal stuff for a while and you start to build up that confidence in your own work, um, obviously you have a huge access and database of other artists and stuff online. Definitely look at what they're doing and what you're doing and just be honest with yourself and, and see do, do you compare can you compete with the people that are out here right now because um, it is a, it's just a competition to game and again like I said you have to be able to offer something uh, that's up to what's being out there or even better or just something different so um, doing it that way you couldn't you can get noticed people will if, especially if you're sending out your your contacts and your blogs and your websites out to just companies straight up and just letting them know uh, what your work consists of then obviously you will be noticed uh, getting to know people uh, contacts and stuff for me it was all through school just going to school and talking to the, my, my own personal peers who graduate together those are your contacts really for me, I've built up recently a lot of my own contacts through Comic Con, uh, being able to start to show my work personally through uh, a convention like that, you know, a really big convention. Being, it helps me start to build my own contacts in a much more professional manner. But for somebody who's just starting out, it's got to be the person next to you, the student, the classmate, even a roommate or someone that you draw with all the time. Uh, I have a personal friend who's become a close contact of mine who grew up together in high school. And we're both conceptual artists, so um, again, it's you just got to keep an eye open, uh, be open-minded, and just talk to a lot of people. Um, thing about conceptual artists and artists in general is that the great artists, drawers, you know, painters, whatever, but some of them just can't talk to people. <laughs> you got to be able to talk to people and communicate. Not only communicate through drawing, but be able to communicate through words. So, yeah, I hope that helps a little bit. Yeah, I think that does cover quite a bit. And also, I wanted to add that he he could also try going to several conferences. Uh, that Absolutely, are yeah. Hosted throughout the the year and, as well. Um, mm -hmm. I know with the Evolve, they have quite a few uh, presentations and things uh, and job fairs. Uh, so I would say check that out as well. Um, our next question is from uh, Victor Ha. Uh, I'm not sure Victor has a microphone, so Victor, if you're there, can you say hello? Victor? Victor, are you there? Doesn't sound like it. Okay, so I don't think Victor has a mic, but I'll ask a question. Um, okay. As a concept development student, I have to do many character turnarounds. I have trouble when a gesture is complicated. How would you keep the character turning in two-dimensional space when the gesture is very complicated? Should I just simplify the pose? Um, if you have, well, if you have a bit of 3D background, which you know, if, if I'm assuming you do, then build your character out in 3D. Turn that and, and just draw over it. If you don't have access to something like that, Find somebody who does, who can help you with that. If not, um, for me, here's a sample of like a creature that I did of a turnaround. Um, yeah, it's got to be simplistic. It's, you got to, here, let me get this straight up. Again, build it with shapes. If you're, if you're doing a full turnaround, side, front, back, if you're doing a three-quarter as well, uh, it's going to be all. It's going to be you know very complicated at first because if you're drawing lines out to match up everything, simplify it really with, with only just shapes and just line everything up the best you can. It's going to be very time consuming and orthographics in general are time consuming. So um, I don't know what else to really tell you other than the fact that you know it's just <laughs> hunker down and and brew a cup, nope. <laughs> cup of coffee <laughs> and it really just you know hammer it out. Uh, it, it, it takes trial and error. You're going to mess up a couple times, and I've done it where it's like I'll start a pose, and I'll try to do a turnaround on it, and it just doesn't match up, and I have to start over again. And it, it really is a trial and error process for me personally because it's, it really is a difficult process. 
Thank you, Peter. That was awesome. Um, the next question is from uh, Ismail Wamala. Uh, they don't have a microphone, so I'm going to ask their question. Um, they say, not sure if this was asked, uh, how many pieces should a design portfolio contain? 15 pieces of each subject matter, vehicles, robots, customs, environments, props? Um, my own personal portfolio was about 24 pages, uh, 24 pages total, but I guess you have to multiply that because it's a front and back piece. It was, it was a pretty big portfolio. Um, if you can, my own personal portfolio covered a lot of aspects. Uh, this blog actually is my own portfolio, so this is what you would see in my own book. So the way I had structured it out was um, about every four pages was its own little uh, piece, like a short story that I had done. So for instance, this is the nomad section right here that would be in my book. I created a short story. I have one environment piece, one character piece with sketches to back it up, one creature piece and sketches to back that up. This is probably a bit more, so it's about three, six, seven pieces right here. And I'd have several stories that, that hit different genres. So this is more of like, this is the nomad, more of the fantasy kind of style. And then I do one that's more sci-fi. So this is like the racer uh, storyline that I've done. So I've done pilots with racer planes, with the environment piece. So I had a total of maybe four or five short storylines that I've done in my portfolio that hit every aspect of you know, conceptual art, character, creature, environment, vehicle, all that stuff. Just, again, to show that I can story tell and be versatile and design, basically be able to draw and design anything. Uh, yeah, I guess I hope that answers the question. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Peter. Um, our next question is from uh, Junko. Uh, he says, hi, Peter. Thanks for the wonderful workshop. My question is, what do visual development departments and animation studios look for in a portfolio? <laughs> that actually is a similar question. So what would you say they require most uh, mostly realistic environment painting, or is it better to show more stylized or your own uh, style illustrations with both environments and characters? That would really depend on the company you're applying to. Um, for one thing, again, like I said, it really understand what you want to do first. If you want to be focused in a particular genre, really, really focus on it. And look for a company that tailors to the style that you're doing. Obviously, if you do something that's more video game style, like robots and sci-fi stuff, you don't want to apply for DreamWorks because they do more of the animation, visual development style. So really pick and choose a company that, you know, look at the games that they produce or the movies that they produce. And obviously, it's got to be an interest to you to want to work at a place that, you know, works on something that's similar to your own particular style. So look at your own work, research the company, um, and then just apply it that way. Uh, more than anything, if it's a particular company that is looking for like sci-fi or fantasy stuff, then obviously you've got to have a book full of just that stuff. If you're applying for a Blizzard, for instance, you'd want to show a lot of fantasy dragons, ogres, knights in armor, that kind of stuff. Uh, again, it really does depend on the kind of company of who you're going to apply to. So research beforehand before you apply. If you send in a portfolio that doesn't match at all, they're not going to really pay attention to you. So. Thanks, Peter. Um, we're going to go back up to a, a, a question uh, Cesar asked earlier. Um, it says, for you, what was your best work and what websites do you recommend uh, for us, uh, uh, for reference, um, artists, draw, uh, drawings, real reference, you know, and he says, excellent workshop. Oh, thank you. Um, let's see, for reference in terms of online, for me, my reference is, the whole world. I mean, I, I do only go online if I need a particular uh, subject matter or a particular piece I need to look at for reference. Uh, obviously, you know, the stuff I talked about in the workshop, you've got to be just observant of your surroundings constantly. I mean, you'll be inspired by the smallest thing that you see. Um, but obviously, if you're doing character designs, you know, like the website or that blog, uh, the, the character design blog spot, they, they constantly post references of anatomy of people and poses and costumes. Uh, Go to workshops also at local to your schools. Um, people, I'm sure they have you know, a three-hour workshop that are set up for anatomy drawing. Um, a lot of schools do that. And a lot of times they don't post it, advertise it, but it, it's definitely there, I'm sure. Um, what was the other part of the question, Uh One second. Um, 